It was 6 p.m. in Lagos. Michael Creek lay on his bed trying to read Flaubert's Madame Bovary. He sighed, he just couldn't do it. He couldn't read anything but the newspaper and the documents necessary for his work anymore. It just didn't seem worth the time. Placing the book closed and flat by his side he brought his hands to rest behind his head and thought of Mrs. Charles. She had given him the book as a gift just before their last meeting. He wondered when they would see each other again, he needed to see her, his mind was continually drifting into memories of the nights he had spent in her arms, the only time in his life that he had felt truly really at peace. The bedside phone rang, abruptly disturbing his repose. He answered, it was Mr. Charles, how appropriate, he thought to himself. Craig, how you doing? You know Charles, taking it easy, trying to keep a low profile, remember? Ha, huh, you worry too much buddy. We haven't heard anything back about that little detective yet have we? He's probably running into all the walls I have built around the borders, he can touch us, don't worry about it. Say. You didn't hear from Babu yet did you? He rang me from the departure lounge a few hours ago. Why? Oh nothing, he'll be fine. Just settling into the hotel room now I should imagine. Probably spending all my money on room service, liquor and whores the bastard. Anyway, I'm calling to confirm that you can be in the office over the next two days to handle any incoming trade. I have to take a trip to Sierra Leone with the lawyer, Agabi, you remember? to arrange a transfer. You understand? Sure Charles, I remember. I will be there. I can handle it. Keep me informed okay? Yeah, well maybe I would if I thought it was worth my while. Charles said, poisonously. Good night Mike. Michael hung up the phone and his attention reverted back to Expedia.com, the website lighting up his computer screen. He had been browsing luxury hotels in Lagos. With Mr. Charles out of the country it was the perfect opportunity to take the woman he loved out, he could put business out of mind, and give himself over to her. Quivering fingertips he came across the hotel bond voyage on Victoria Island, stunning views across the Gulf of Guinea and comfortably distant from both his and Charles' respective offices. Deluxe room with a lagoon view, ideal. His mobile vibrated into life, it was her. Hello. Hey. Mr. Charles has gone. I watched his car all the way down the road. He is surely gone. Would you like to come over? No. What? Ha, I'm joking. But seriously I'm not gonna come round. What are you playing at Mike? Pack a night bag honey, I'm taking you out for the night. Oh Mike, that sounds incredible. She shrieked. I'll pick you up in a half hour. Get out of here Mike, you jerk. I need an hour and a half to get ready for you. Minimum. 45 minutes then. Come on Mike. An hour? Mike are you serious? Did you hear me before? Because you don't appear to have heard me. Her voice now sounded strained. An hour 15? Mike continued, enjoying the interchange's absurd whimsy. Mike, an hour and a half, or I don't know. Okay, I'll pick you up in an hour and a half. Mike interrupted, putting on a crude Chicago and accent, Capone style knowing he would get a laugh. Anyways I got to has a shower. Michael could hear <laughs> Mrs. Charles laughing as he hung up the phone. He'd already had a shower. He opened the long mirrored sliding doors of his bedroom wardrobe and pulled out a casual navy blue Ralph Lauren suit and a buddy colored shirt. It would be waiting for him there on the bed when he returned from his shave.